Hello and welcome everybody. It's Sunday, which means it's time for the APAC division. It's the last Vietnamese race of the week. And joining me in the commentary roof today is Seb. Seb, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks, Yukon. How are you, man? Yeah, it's going well. We've had an exciting race week so far around Vietnam. A lot of ups and downs, but I'm looking forward to see how APAC takes this one on and whether we'll see a different winner. Only one winner so far in the APAC division, Mikhail. But will someone else take the crown? I know you have a few things to say on this track. It's uh, very possible we see someone else win. Yeah, well, Ben the Bear's normally the guy, but he's had a bit of issues the past two races. Uh, this track is a 23-turn track with uh, one massive straight that's got a turn in it, turn 10, but that doesn't really count as a turn. It's just a little kink. Uh, the walls loom on you very closely, especially in that last sector, but at the end of the day... This track will bite you if you ask too much of it. And yeah, as you said, I, don't, I have a lot of things to say about this track and I, I don't really enjoy it. Yeah, well, it's not a great track to drive. And, you know, looking at turn ones and two, you know, it's it's got uh, it's asking a lot of the driver. Say that much. Yeah, exactly. We've already had Australia, we've had Bahrain, and now Vietnam. We've got China next week, then. Looking at the rest of the calendar, Netherlands, Spain, Monaco, another very tight and tricky track. Azerbaijan, Canada, France, Austria, Britain, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, Singapore, Russia, Japan, and then USA, Mexico, Brazil, and obviously rounding everything off at Abu Dhabi. But obviously Vietnam this week, possibly the, well, it's the newest track, you know, tied with Zandvoort, but... A lot of people in the build-up to this over the course of the last week have expressed how much, you know, they struggle with this track. They you know, just dislike the circuit, how tricky it is, how close it is. And, well, it looks like we're just about ready here to get underway. The countdown has started in the lobby. And, well, we'll see how Apex can get on with this. Can Ben the Bear finally round out his points drought. He hasn't scored a point yet in the season. But around such a tricky track, wouldn't be any surprise to see a few people DNF around here. I think we're just waiting on one person who seems to be having some sort of lobby issue. They keep leaving and joining. But once they're in, we can get underway and racing action can commence. Obviously, 18 minutes short qualifying before a 50% race. And weather's on dynamic, Seb, do you think, what do you think would happen if we saw a wet race here today? Uh, absolute chaos. <laughs> I think there's no other word for it. If we see guys being careful in here, it, it, even being careful in this track, it's hard. To, to keep it off the walls like I, i'll say many times this last sector can bite you very easily especially through turns 16 17 18 just ask too much of it and sometimes you just can send that rear around or you might turn in that bit too early than you expect and just clip the inside of the walls you got to be on it here I yeah. i'll say this i've said it once i'll say it many more times those walls loom on you yeah, and there's a lot of curbs that can just offset your car as well. And well, if they're slippery, if they're wet, that's just only going to exacerbate the problem. As we do load in to qualifying, we'll get a look at who is on this grid today. And I think we've got 18 drivers here at the moment. If not 19, if someone... Fix their connection issues. <laughs> there we go. Everyone seems to have connected, which is wonderful. And the lobby's just waiting for now. Everyone to load in. There we are, and it's a very, very dry-looking qualifying, which I imagine is a sigh of relief for everyone in the driving seats. But we do indeed have 18 drivers today on the grid. We've got Gorziek over in the Mercedes, Tumac in 
the Renault, Yukio and Angel in the two racing points. Cello in the McLaren, combined YouTuber in the Ferrari. Jake in the Red Bull Panda. In the Williams, Ben the Bear in the other Mercedes. Matt, the brown guy, Shrimp, PTR, Stars, Mikael, Enzo, Trin and Sim Dogger rounds out the 18 drivers we have here today. And it looks like Shrimp is first out of the pit lane in the Haas. Indeed, expect about one minute twenty. Sorry, one minute thirty-two lap times from your top drivers in this division. I guess you could say it's group. Uh, your good lap time would be around one thirty-threes for your average drivers. That will get you somewhere around the top five-ish, top ten-ish. Yeah, we'll we see that. See. Well, as, yeah, I was just seen from past races. If you look at tier one, tier two, tier th even the Americas. Yeah, we've already got a few drivers here in APAC that you'd expect to be in those top few. Only po four podium sitters over the course of the last two mm -hmm. weeks. Well, it's seen that there's just this top kind of group and then you've just got another group somewhere in the middle and then just some stragglers along through this grid, but doesn't mean you can't always get some surprises in there. As you've seen, Ben the Bear, who was the champion last last season, um, hasn't had a great run of things or in terms of luck go in the first two rounds. And I've seen Mikhail win the first two races at Bar in Australia, leading the championship on 50 points. Yeah, very, very strong Behind. start to the season for him. Mm -hmm. Behind him is Captain of Gold on 25 points with... Remco Van Putin on 21, Panda on 18, PTR, or sorry, Peter I should say, on 12, Simdogger 10, Trin 9, Igor 6, Fellow 4, Angel 4, and the rest, Ben the Bear, Shrimp, Enzo, Emzo, Yukio, Luckman combined, Psycho and the Brown Guy, all haven't scored a point this season. Uh, the Pirates, as they've been likely called, the Reserves, Domi, Freeware, Entrick and Yoda, and also not, well, I did, I, I did mark that up. Not so, so ma sum. Excuse me for that. That is some poor pronunciation. Uh, I have 18 points, 12 points, 12 points, 0 points, and 0 points. All to their names. Yeah, on board with Shrimp right now on his flying lap. And unfortunately, he's been hit with that rev glitch. So we're staying away from his cockpit view. But <laughs> we'll see what he sets as this opening lap time as... He hasn't made any huge mistake. He's got that low fuel indicator on. So this is going to be a fairly strong run from him, you'd like to think. He's coming out of the gate strong. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily optimal lines through turn 20 and 21. He's just drifted a bit wide at turn 20, and that's just going to cost him some time through 21. So note on turn 19, which is at that right hand over before turn 20, where he went a bit wide on exit, that wall can has some points where it just where it just sticks out on you, so you've got to be careful you don't get too close to it, otherwise you might end up damaging a wind or, or losing your rear end off it, so... What's Decent lap from Shrimp to start off, 34-2. On this cello, 133-8 coming out of the McLaren. His teammate Enzo behind him, can he do any better? I think he's actually just started a flyer, as opposed to rounding one out. Ben the Bear has also just started a flyer again, we've seen him have so much pace so far this season, but just unable to score a point so far. Simdogger in the Renault, 135.2, and Anhel in the Racing Point at 136.8, but it's Trin in the Alfa Romeo, 133.6, to take the provisional pole spot at the moment. And a few drivers as well, Seb, looking to try and qualify on these medium tyres. Mm-hmm. Well, interesting enough, the mediums last a Approximately, oh, if I can get that up around, I think, 20-odd laps. That's wrong. That's definitely wrong from what I have there. Sorry, 13-odd laps. Just from the start of the race. So, normally, it's, you know, you want to, you want to uh, try and do a one-stop around here, but there's so many corners around this lap, 23 corners, that sometimes a one-stop might not necessarily pay off, considering how much, uh, how much of a lap there is to do around here. And just that kind of plays into qualifying as well. 
don't have to go hard at every single corner in here. Just get little gains from each corner throughout the lap time and you can see yourself with a pretty good lap. Spend Vez is flying through turn 19, takes turn 19 very nicely. Could have used a bit more curb of turn 20, but yeah, it looks so far to be a good lap. Gets that car hooked around very nicely through turn 22. Be careful not to turn in too early for 23. It can be very deceiving. Has to cross the line. 33-2. That's a great start. There's Mikhail also with a 33-2 as well, but he's 400s off that time. Yeah, very, very close between the two at the moment. Combined due to as well, a 135.6, but that is on the medium compounded tyres. So I expect to see those guys come out on softs just to qualify a little bit higher up this grid, but maybe they want to stay towards the back, even if, you know, qualifying position is useful. They may want to stay out of the turn one sort of battle that inevitably mm -hmm. happens yeah exactly at the end of the day fresh tires can be can be good turn one and two it can be an absolute nightmare especially leading up to turn three which is that that first roundabout we kind of go through interesting enough we just got notes on if you saw before pdr coming at the pit lane just before ben the bear you know if that were to happen in a race and Ben the Bear and PDR were to come out side by side, Ben the Bear would have to give way to PDR on the left hand side. As has been outlined by the head steward Mikia, who is racing in this races. Ooh, Jake on his outlap catches the curb yeah, coming geez. through turn twenty one. It's <laughs> fair to say is this looked like an outlap, I don't know why it was looked a bit I don't know what's the word for it, but Flam we'll say flamboyant for now. It's down to first gear through turn one. You're going to want to cut over this curb on the right hand side for turn two. Swing it over, break just over that pit line over through turn three. Get it over this curb on the left hand side, turn four, and just keep it as close to that right hand side wall of turn five. And straight line it down this straight all the way to turn six. Now, you've got to keep one tie within track limits at all time in order to avoid getting your lap invalidated. But you can take a lot of curb around here, but it's been outlined to not cut too much, otherwise. You'll be penalised by the stewards, as outlined by Mikiel. Gets it in. Nicely done. Nice, nice, neat exit. Not asking too much of the car. You don't need to really ask too much of the car early on in qualifying. You just need to build up a rhythm to that final lap. You're going to get three laps of qualifying here in Vietnam. One minute, 33 lap times for your average driver. You just want to build up to that lap time. Yeah, really don't want to be having any early mistakes either. It's so easy to just... Mm -hmm ruin the car here you don't want to crash it out i mean that you can't go for those later runs like you said this is just yeah that banker lap yeah exactly yeah exactly oh he's just a bit out of shape under the curb that would have done him any justice in time would have lost him approximately two tenths but lost an that purple... as well. yeah he did didn't he well that's lost him more than two tenths now hasn't it yeah well, like, like you were saying it's just you need to get a banker here i mean it is relatively easy to overtake with that massive straight from turn 9 to turn 11 and you also got the pit straight DRS as well as the DRS between turns 5 and turn 6 the two roundabouts so it just allow it helps it helps with um overtaking but uh you know you just gotta gotta I guess pick your fights really with this track because you may be fighting other drivers for track position or even in the race but you also gotta be careful of these walls that <laughs> just get ever so close as you go push harder yeah Peter hops into P3 in the Red Bull and Jake despite that collision with the wall still picks up 10th place right now obviously I think everyone behind him is qualified on those mediums and is now coming out on soft compound tyres Panda he invalidated his last lap I don't think he's got the fuel because he's already aborted this lap as well so and there's a big slide coming through the runner he's managed to hold it very very nice through turns seven and eight but well that nearly went very badly for the williams yeah Dolan's it retire. nearly went very badly <laughs> you're right it wouldn't it wouldn't have ended in um an end of qualifying but you know it definitely would have damaged the ego a bit he does like to call himself the drift king so i can understand him doing that a bit but nice lap from pdr as you mentioned before 33 4 putting him up to p3 is panic going over that curve that's going to lose him a lot of time on traction just to get that banker in yeah, Matt as well, reserving today for the Alfa Romeo squad. He didn't look like he was having the best of luck either. He was off the track, an end plate missing, and an invalidated lap time. So he still needs to get out and 
get a lap in if he wants to be anywhere near the point scoring positions at the end of qualifying. Shrimp, who we saw set the first half of the session on 134.2, is out on another flyer as well in the Haas. And, well, he's just come mm -hmm. through 11 and 12. That very, very good overtaking spot down at the hairpin. I'm sure we'll see a lot of people going for late breaking, trying to get switchbacks, etc. through there. And it looks like he's found a fair bit of time through the first two sectors. He just needs to round out this final sector nicely and keep it all nice and clear. Yeah. Oh, that's what I mean about getting too close to that wall, Unicorn. Yeah. 19, just, you just get too close to the wall, just sticks out a bit. It wouldn't have cost him too much time, but it would have just ruined his rhythm he was getting into with this lap. The second lap he's doing. And again, he's hit the wall again. Oh, oh out. he's out. Whoa. Okay. Well, I think I said before that turn 23, you've got to be careful not turning in too early, and he's just done that exactly. To a T of what I said, so well, that's that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the car's already out of the way, so it won't impede anyone's laps because it wasn't a very, very disruptive place. Cello, two and a half tenths improved, puts him into fifth, but well, Shrimp, he is not going to be improving. He's already out of the point scoring positions, so not how Meanwhile, he wanted to start this race weekend off. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, Stars with a great lap, he's put himself into P4, 33, 4, 9, 8. He's been a solid driver so far through last season and this season. Yukio now in the racing point to the line. 11th place, a one and a half second improvement. So brings him within three hundredths of a second of his teammate right now. Mm -hmm. Team Max also on a lap. He's just running turn 22 in the power down using all that ERS that's remaining. Looks like he takes turn 23 pretty safely. Doesn't really get any positions, but he drops two tenths off his best lap time. So looking pretty good for him so far. There's a bit of a squabble going down that back straight from turn 11 to turn 12. Sorry, turn 10 to turn 11, I should say. Yeah, just on a note, of, just on a note of turn 11, that it's it is a great overtaking spot, but some got to be careful sometimes if you're going for that late breaking maneuver, just not to go too deep because it is very tight on exit. I've seen before when cars get on the that exit curve like Panda did, you can lose a bit of time out of the corner. Yeah, I'm not sure if Enzo picked up a slipstream off of his teammate. We saw it a lot earlier as he comes into the pit lane, so not happy with his lap. But we saw it a lot earlier in the week throughout the other races and other divisions that teammates do like to give each other a little bit of slipstream down that long back straight, and it can really benefit you here as I think no one's on a flyer out now, Ben the Bear is lining up to start his next attempt and well, fresh softs. He didn't have the low mm -hmm. fuel light on the last run and apparently he was running about seven laps of fuel. Didn't go for his classic though where he just runs a load of laps and I think that's probably because of how long this track is and that 133 mm -hmm. lap time. Yeah, there's a lot of, like you said before, a lot of time to gain from that back straight. Uh, a lot of time to gain from that toe you can get. Ben, ben the Bear can light this track on fire, Unicorn. He really can. If he gets going, he's unstoppable. To be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to break just at that start of that red sign on the right hand side. Get it over to third gear, left hand side. Flick it over to the right, over that curb. Into turn three. He's down to fourth. Just could have taken more of that left hand curb for turn four, but looks to be. Decent lap so far. He has gone pretty early, but maybe that's just our uh, lap time. Sorry, quality time, as I should say. Oh. Just taking this away through this section. Down a little bit out of sector one on his previous best. There, though, is his teammate in Gorsi, and here's that slipstream. We're finally seeing it come into play. Although Gorsi oh. taps the wall, and that's an outlap, oh. so that's going <laughs> to sort of mess his run up because well he's now not gonna be able to do it and it looks like Ben's just dropped ben the, the bears pulled out yeah that was interesting I was confused as why Gauzy egg pulled out so early he had a lot of straight to give to Ben the bear and he had about four car lengths to him but you know <laughs> that can happen sometime well that has not gone how the Mercedes crew would have envisioned it going whether Ben's gonna do another lap here he doesn't have the fuel light on so I think he probably can. It's maybe just the tire wear that, you know. Gorsi X out. Has he? He's crashed. He's come out through turn. What is that? Sixteen in sector three, and 
that's the second retirement of qualifying, and this does not bode well for these drivers in the race. Ben is going to go for another lap. Jake as well. He's just crossed the line in third, a 133.3, putting himself one-tenth ahead of his teammate who's flying. But here goes Ben again. And well, no slipstream is going to be coming out of his teammate this time, that's for sure. But whether he can find still more pace on that 133.1 that he's already set, we'll just have to wait and see. Interesting enough, everyone's just onto the soft now. So it looks like we're going to have, at least for the top, top 10, an all soft running at the start of the race. Ben again, failing to find any improvement through Sector 1, about a tenth lost on his 133-1 one run as he comes out through turns 8 and 9. Oh, that was really good, Unicorn. He took that really well. That was a great, great 8 and 9. He's going to also get in a friendly toe from a, from a racing point of view, Kyo, as well. Yeah, I don't know if Yukio intended to give Ben that little advantage. I don't think Yukio probably thinks he needs it, but either way, through the hairpin again, very nice and clean. Through there, hugging that left-hand wall. Again, a little bit of slipstream of Jake there who's on his inlap. He got, he got a really good turn in through turn 11. That just allowed for a great exit on the way through turn 12, which is that just little kink which you got close to the wall on the left-hand side. See how he takes turn 19 now. How close will he get to the wall? That is just about perfect. He's going to take turn 20. Very nicely, gets over the curb, takes a lot of this inside curve of 21, break out that right-hand side pole for 22, try and hug the inside as much as possible. It's very easy to go deep into 22. He's nearly gone too early into 23. This is going to be a 20, 20 sorry, 32 easy. Easy. 32.6. Absolutely huge lap from Ben the Bear. PTR mm -hmm. in the Red Bull. Currently two tenths up. Can he find, well, any more because it needs to be a monumental lap if he wants P1, but P2 and 3 still on the table. His teammate, Jake, he's rounded out his qualifying with a 133.3 and Mikhail on an outlap right now. Mm -hmm. Mikhail looks to be the closest challenger to Ben the Bear, so you to hope he can put something up. Some absolutely glorious lap time to get him there, but six tenths is a big ask right now. Although it's just a long lap time, so if he absolutely nails it, there's a chance he might be able to do it, but we'll wait and see. Well, it's PTR catches. Yeah, he caught the flag. 1332. So Mikhail does have to find improvement, although he's not using any ARS there, but I think he's there. Something we haven't seen from a lot of drivers, reserving ERS through that first section, because this track is so long. You see drivers run out of ERS in the later stages of the lap because they've been burning it through that early stages of Sector 1 where you can't really fully utilise it. So, Mikhail uh, yeah. actually reserving it a little bit there, but maybe not yeah, very early sure, on. Yeah. I think he might just be slipstreaming stars he's giving, here. He's doing a good job of it. This is a great toe that he's giving right now. But yeah, on, on the topic of the ERS, you know... From turns one to five, you don't really need it. It's very hard to get the fold down through those corners, and you're better off just turning it off and then flying it elsewhere. Yeah, stars is just going through. Yeah, Trent, not sure what's happened to him. I don't know if he's retired on track. The Alfa Romeo does look like it's still moving, but there might have been a collision somewhere on the track as stars clips the inside wall. We've seen it already. Start the session, that's an invalidation. Mikau is done, and well, that is the Alpha Tower. He's done and dusted. They probably would have liked to be fighting for P2 and P4, but both places reserved for the Red Bulls, it would seem. The sister team won't be too pleased with how that's gone for them, but it's Ben the Bear who sits on pole as we just wait for the last two drivers to enter the pit lane. Well, I don't know if Mikhail giving a toe to Stars there has cost him a chance of P2 there. PDR with a great lap to get himself into P2 and just ahead of Mikhail. Jake as well, just, just getting in front of Stars by a tenth and about half a tenth off of Mikhail in P3. Yeah, look how, look how close that grid is from PDR to combined, sorry, not combined, to uh, Trin all the way in P10. Four tenths in it. Four tenths in that. It's four and a half tenths. 
Imagine how close we'll be in the race. You're gonna get massive DRS trains from turns 9 to, to 11. Just expect there to be some instances as well as they're gonna be fighting all the way up to turn 13 if they do go for moves in turn 11. Yeah, the DRS train's super, super powerful around here. Um, they do make it just sort of, not difficult to overtake, we just see a lot of positional switching, but there it is. Ben Libera, 132.6, puts him head and shoulders above the rest of this grid and on pole. PTR in the red ball snatches P2 away from Mikau, who starts this race in P3. Jake, PTR's teammate in the other red ball, starts fourth with Stars just behind him in fifth. And we have Enzo and Cello in the two McLarens. Then Tumac in the Renault, the brown guy in the Williams, and Trin rounds out the top 10. Then we have Simdogger, combined YouTube Matt, Anhel, Yukio, Shrimp, Panda, Matt, and Gorziek, who retired after a mistake out of that last corner. But, well, if qualifying is anything to go by, Seb, we are going to have a very, very tight race on our hands. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, I've got news that it's going to be an o a very overcast race for this race, but should be dry through throughout the whole entire time it's gonna be interesting to see who out of the top 10 is going to start on those hards or mediums see if they can try and make a one-stop work from their positions obviously the safety cars kind of prominent it's almost expected around here with, with the walls and you know this track is not very forgiving to drivers nor is it fun to drive as well a very hard track to master we've seen a lot of mistakes made in the qualifying session but We'll see what happens. Yeah, better to make those mistakes in the qualifying rather than in the race. And I expect we will see those outside the top 10 yeah. opt for the mediums, which gives you a little bit of an advantage and can mm -hmm. drag you back into it. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gauzy improve with, you know, that alternate tie strategy, obviously starting at the back, but he'll be wanting to gain some places. But, well, mm -hmm. why did you yeah, well... rejoin the session? I don't know if we had a connection issue there, but fingers crossed everything's good. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's the same for Ben the Bear. He's had a bit of issues the past two races, as I've already mentioned before. But, you know, you, you said it before. It's better to get those mistakes out of the way in quality and not the race. Because, well, you don't really get points for quality. It does help, though. Points are in the race. And, well, that's where people are really made up. It's time yeah. to see how Gauzy Eggs do, starting from 18th as you But, yeah. Looking at that tyre split, it is exactly 50-50. It's softs in the top 10 and everyone else on the medium tyres. APAC, the last division of the week, they get to see what's happened to everyone else. And, well, the medium soft has been particularly strong for those starting outside the top 10. These softs die off pretty early. And only safety car, though, we've seen that play a big role into these races. And, well, Paris over in Tier 1, he... You know, opted off of the softs on an early safety car, and that really gave him the benefit in the later stages of the race when he went for some fresh softs and just dominated the rest of the field. And everyone in this top 10 on softs. Fingers crossed we don't see that early safety car, but mm -hmm. it's a tricky Very likely, track. though. It's very likely. Expect expecting drivers to go too wide into turn 3, 4, and 5. Just, just trying to get some positions at the start of the race. Maybe being a bit too eager, asking too much of each other, asking too much of their car, asking too much of themselves maybe, but it's always very likely around here. Yeah, and you've got to yeah, yeah. factor in how good of a start people get as well. If someone gets an absolutely mm -hmm. rapid start off the line, that puts someone side by side into turn one, and it's a pretty long run down into turn one. Mm -hmm. it's a, like you said, decent sized run into turn one. It's very wide on entry, but it, it sharpens up a lot on, on exit, so that can catch a few off guard, and there could be a couple of instances there that we might have to look out for at the start of the race. But As they just now, some drivers get their cars locked into AI, have their tyre temps locked in for the start of this race as they just set up into their grid spots. Yeah, that overcast nature might keep those tyre temperatures just a little bit down and might affect race pace just a tiny bit from what these guys might have been practising. Mm -hmm. As you can see, Gauzy Egg in the background there. Just the last driver to come around the final corner. But things... Look out, look out for stars here. He, he sometimes can get rocket starts. So if he gets one here, he could cause some serious strife at the top four. Well, here we go. 
The red lights are on. It's three, four, five red lights here in Vietnam. And away we go. Who has got the best up? Ben the Bear has absolutely launched off the line. And like you said, Stars one to watch around the outside. He's already up to P2. He's past his teammates and both Red Bulls. It's three wide. The two Alpha Tauris and Peter into that first turn. The two Alpha Tauris oh, getting very close. Oh, sorry to cut you off. I was just about to say, Mikhail and Stars look like they almost got cut off by PDA and cut each other off. It looks so far. It looks to be pretty clean. Doesn't look to be any major instance. Jake not having a good race start. Already passed by Stars Emzo. And now the other McLaren and Cello. Fellow countryman coming up the inside down into turn six. But he's going to be able to defend through seven. And as he comes around this roundabout style corner, he holds it up the inside. The Red Bull defending with all his might to not drop three places on this opening lap. But this huge, huge straight with a slipstream from Cello could see the McLaren get that position regardless. He hops out to the inside and he's already alongside the Red Bull. And just the carry of speed is absolutely monumental. The overtake is enabled as well. Really using a lot of this battery. And he's already used all of his allowance for this lap, Seb. And Jake gets back up through the inside of turn 12. Very nicely done from the Swede. Yeah, very, very important. You actually use up all that ERS by a turn 11 so that you can get in front of all these drivers who are likely to use all up, up all the ERS as well. However, a lot of these guys have also kind of been a bit careful that Chelo is the only really one, only one who's really used up a lot of that ERS for the lap. Yeah, and well, Ben already seven tenths clear of PTI. He'll be looking to right the wrongs of the other races and well he's had a tricky start to the season this could be a strong 25 points for him if he can get to the end and still be in first place and right now it looks like he's got the pace to do so he just needs to keep his nose clean mm -hmm. just on the topic of, topic of clean nose it looks like everyone's kept a clean nose so i'm very impressed by that i'll tell you that much the fact that everyone's been able to keep a clean nose on this track even Mikko and stars who nearly had it coming together at turn two with help from PDR for that, for that matter, you know, to see all 18 cars get through lap one cleanly is a great achievement around this circuit. This circuit is an absolute challenge and it's not great fun to drive. Yeah, that front four already starting to pull away, but like you said, everyone doing it cleanly, very, very impressive stuff. Jake starting to just sort of settle into sixth place. Not the race start he would have wanted, but the timing tower as well, not exactly accurate right now but in terms of the timing but he's not under too much pressure from cello anymore he's just been able to hold p6 but he'll be looking to try and retake some of his places now we've got a lot of cars coming through turn 12 the williams of panda looking to try and get past shrimp in the has looking around the outside now turn 13 and well the has gives him a big Ooh. squeeze to the outside and he, well, he has to back out to avoid going into that wall doesn't cost him to combine youtuber behind but on a wider circuit, it most definitely would have. Mm -hmm. Another corner that just wider entry and turns on you. Was Panda nearly loses it through turn 21, just to be able to hold on to it. It was all. Did look like Simdog had just ran into the back of Yukio, did he? Can't tell. Yeah, he did. He's lost the right, right side of his front wing. Yeah, the Renault won't looked be like too happy. Gave... Yeah, exactly. He looked like he gave him a shunt through turn 21 on the braking zone. And that's what sent UK forward. But yeah, Red Panda nearly, nearly uh, coming into contact with Shrimp on the exit of turn 13. That could have, that would not have ended well, especially with how close those cars behind were. But like you said before, the are starting to see some groups form up. We got the top four kind of pulling away from the rest, and then just got this big, big middle, middle group in the. From P4 to about sorry, P5 to about P11, and then you got these last six P12 to P18, or last seven I should say. Well, it's lap three. DRS is enabled, and Mikhail not quite being able to take advantage. But Jake, on the other hand, in the Red Bull, is alongside Emzo as they come down into turn 11, and well, he's finally back past, and it looks like Emzo might lose out to his teammate as well, Cello, up through turn 12. He'll take full advantage of Jake opening that door. A little bit of contact between the Red Bull and mm -hmm. the McLaren, but nothing to write home about. I shouldn't think either one will yeah. be too annoyed. Cello just great opportunistic move there. Made made good good ground on on Emzo because of Emzo's uh, traction on the exit curb of turn 11. 
I'll tell you what, Jack's been looking lively so far. Looking for a lot of moves in that red ball, especially into turn 11. He could be throwing some stones in the work as Stars gets a penalty. Maybe that was a bit old, but I just didn't notice it. But yeah, like I said, Jake looking lively. So he could he could he could throw some spans in the work for these two Alpha Tauris right now. They look decently strong. Yeah, Mikal still on the rear of PTR and DRS again. I don't imagine we'll see him go for the move down into turn six, but more than likely he'll hold off and use that DRS just to get close and, and when he gets it again out of well, into turn ten and down towards turn eleven, that's when we'll see him. Make the move, get past PTR oh, yeah. here. P yeah, Peter, PDR just got a got got a couple of wheels on that inside curve of turn turn eight, and that's just cost him an exit. It has he needed a really good exit if he wanted to at least fight through here without having to use any ERS, but he's had to use a bit, and Mick has just gonna soar past easily with that DRS. And meanwhile, Jake behind gets easily past stars with that DRS. Stars also hits the back of Jake. Ooh, he's gonna get past here, but after only after bumping him. Now, will he give the position back? It looks like he will. It's going to allow Cello through. He's going to give that position back. That's some decent etiquette right there. Yeah, very nice to see from the Alvatari, but neither he nor Jake will be happy about the fact that there is now a McLaren uh, in front of him. Enzo and Stars almost exchanged positions, and they did for a brief second, but evidently mm -hmm. they thought better of it. Yukio and Combined Juchi, but they've exchanged as well, down for 14th. Yukio in the rated point now ahead of the Ferrari. Yeah, that bump's really cost stars, hasn't it? It's dropped him off two seconds now from his teammate. And he had to also lose that position to Jake as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of cars coming down towards turn one. The Renault of Tumac has joined the party as well, and all this battling ahead has brought Tumac, Trin, and the brown guy back into contention for a lot more points than they were battling for before. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've got a decent-sized train going on here. Oh, teammate getting slightly out of shape through turn four. Thought he was going to send it into the wall, but he gathered it very nicely. It's interesting how these medium runners will come into effect later on in the race. Talking about Shrimp Panda and Mr. Angel here specifically, who are at the front of the pack. If they can keep it clean and see how that one stop works, if there's a safety car thrown into the mix here or not. But all this to be seen. Yeah, and speaking of those medium runners, Shrimp and Panda have just exchanged positions. The Williams now up into P12, but here's DRS for these sort of mid-pack runners. It's Emzo on Stars looking to try and follow his teammate through, who made a move through here after Stars got a little bit skewed with through here, almost running into the back of him, avoids the contact, and or almost spins it, just finds the traction when he needs it. Just behind them, Trin and Tumac not exchanging. Yeah, it's a tough corner to follow people through turn 11. You've got to got to account for the closing speed going into the corner of turn 11, so you just got to break that bit earlier than you expect. Oh, Yuki, a kinda... huge dive. Oh, that's not a spot you'd expect to see a dive. Especially, this is not a spot you'd expect to see people fight in, but, jeez, Yuki nearly got sent into the wall by Shrimp there. Well, he definitely tapped it. The car... He's missing some wing. Looks like he's missing some wing by the way he's driving. He's pulling off to another Ferrari by, and it's into the pit lane. Very, very unfortunate incident for the racing point. Fingers crossed he can get a new front wing. Could take hard to the end, but I imagine it'll be something more along the lines of another set of mediums to go to softs yeah. at the end. I believe you. I think he should commit to a two-stop at this point. Hopefully a safety car comes out late in the race. He's kind of bet on him. it. Yeah, he, he, I reckon he probably goes softs for about six, seven, maybe eight laps. Stretch them out. He might go hards. That's, that's an interesting call right there. I personally would have gone medium, see how they would have gone, but... Well, we'll still, see how this pans out. There's battle going on for, well, second place. PTR picks up P2 away from Mikau, and... The Australian looking to try and get back up the inside of PTR, who closes off the outside very, very strongly. And, there is no way Mikau had any doubt in his mind that the Red Bull was not going to give him that line through turn 13. <laughs> well, Mikau Smart Racing just pulls out of a corner that it doesn't think he can get much out of, turn 13. We have seen, some, we have seen an attempt there by Yukio and some other side-by-side -side action through turn 13, but it can sometimes not end well. Especially at right now. 
starting on the seventh lap, finishing up the six. These soft tyres would be just about dead as we see the brown guy pitting. Yeah, fairly yeah, early from him. Mm -hmm. I imagine fairly it's early. a two stop. As hard to the end would be. The race pace around here on the hards really is not optimal, and I imagine mediums and a set of softs as well. You just get that back time, that time back that you spend in the pit lane. It is mediums for him. As who is that? Mm -hmm. Stars gets very, very wayward out of is that turn four, turn five, and drops all the way back down to ninth. And that is not what he wants to be doing. He's really, really not had a good couple of laps. He has dropped all the way down now to ninth place. He's the last of these soft runners yet to pit. And when he was battling mm -hmm. up in the top five at the start of this race. He also has the second least amount of ERS out of all of them. He's only second to Jake, who has just about no ERS left in the tank. Yeah, he's going to be very frustrated with himself. He was in P4, could still be in around P5, but due to that moment he had just then and that contact he had with Emzo, that's dropped him back all the way down to P9 now. So he's going to be he's going to be driving on driving with a bit of anger right now. Just ahead of him, Trin picks for, up P7. Yeah. Decent move for Trin. Just just from knowing stars, he he will be driving with a bit of anger. Unicorn. Well, but, a penalty as well. Not going to be the best of starts for him, but it's still a long way to go in this race. Mm -hmm, a long way indeed. You're Pick doing out. about 40... Yeah, sorry. 1 minute 40 laps... You know, 23 corners. You can. There's a lot of time to gain on each other over a lap. So, well, Mikau, his teammate, still sticking to the rear of PTR and DRS again enabled. He's just been sort of not making too many looks on the inside of PTR. He's happy where he is right now, just using this DRS, saving a little bit of ERS up as well. He's well over half the battery full and. PTR there, a little bit of a better exit out of turn 9. That's going to help him as they saw down this long straight. But Mikau, very tight to the rear. Slipstream getting him a little bit of pace. Now DRS as well. And it's going to be very difficult for the Red Bull to defend this move from the Alpha Tari. The pace is very, very strong. Mikau around the outside. PTR still there on the inside, but just tries to take it a little bit too tight. Loses too much speed. And Mikau now back up into P2. Trin looking for mm. another move. You can see ahead of him, Jake and Emzo are side by side as they come down towards turn 13. What's going to happen to the Alfa Romeo? Looking at this, Emzo gets Jake up the inside, secures the move into turn 13, and well, Trin just watches on, waiting for an opportunity to present itself, but I don't think it will at this stage of the race. And, well, when are these soft runners going to get off of them? We've already seen a couple pit, but there's PTR into the pits. Emzo follows him. Jake won't, obviously, to avoid the double stack, and... Trin stays out behind the Red Bull. Undercut would be very valuable here. I've said it many times now. A lot of corners to this track, so you can gain a lot of time through those corners. Just as long as you don't get caught in that traffic, but even then it's still still pretty pretty easy to gain back that time if you can get past people before the final sector. Oh, you know, Trin's just all over the yeah, Trin's just all over the back of Jake, looking for a move. See if he can make one work. Not wise to go for one, for one here, but he could go for one on that big back straight from turn nine to turn eleven. Spiding his time, he's got eighty percent ERS, whereas Jake is living it dangerously with that twenty five percent. Asking a lot from his skill to be able to keep in front of Trin, but looks like it won't be for much longer. Trin's got to overtake on. He will have DRS. And he should just soar past Jake easily, as he does so. Yeah, very, very nicely done. From the Alfa Romeo and the other Red Bull, he's on the attack rather than the defense. PTR on fresh hards, just come out of the pits lane, is on the back of Shrimp. Already side by side, getting very close. There's a very narrow gap, but he just finds the room to put his Red Bull through. Oh, and Shrimp's going for a dive. That is a huge move. Contact between the two cars and the Haas. Well, he's back through. I don't think PTR will be too happy about that. I think the stewards might have something to say as well. But, well, no damage to either car. And Shrimp stays in P9. But you can just see the, the fresh tyres are 
providing PTO with so much more grip and traction through Sector 3 here. And now he's got a rolling roadblock in the form of the Haas. Mikhail pits for what will probably be, I would imagine, hards. It is hards. hards. Well, it's stretching it out. This is some very interesting strategy right now. Trying to stretch it out. Maybe trying to do this one stop here. If they can do that, that, that'd be actually really good for them. Oh, we have to see how it drives, though. We're we'll see, going to see what Ben the Bear does. It looks like he'll probably just go into the hearts as well as... Now, that hasn't really played out well for Yukio, who before had that wing damage and pitted for the softs. It's not worked out well at all for him. And meanwhile, Peter and Shrimp still going at it. Expect these two to get feisty. These two are very aggressive drivers. <laughs> Shown before by Shrimp's dive bomb on him into turn 11. PDR takes the position back from Shrimp, and well, that's what he said. It's not exactly the best place. Turn six, but he's made the place, and now using all of the ERS out of turn nine to try and get the pace to avoid the comeback from Shrimp. Shrimp, though, does have DRS less ERS in the tank, though. And it's going to be tricky. Here he goes. On the inside again. Oh, gee, this is touch and go stuff, man. This is really touch and go. They're not, they're not being all. Oh, Shrimp's been uh, initiating it more than PDRs. PDR goes for a dive into turn 13. Goes a bit deep. Shrimp now looking to have a go through turn 14 and 15. They touch. Gets squeezed into the. Oh. Very aggressive from both drivers. That could have ended very badly, though. So that combines caught onto the back of Shrimp. Yeah, both just put a lot on the line. There are a lot of risk involved in those moves, but PTR has come out on top. A lot of pit stops as well. Ben has gone for medium compound tyres, Seb, and, well, he's going to come out right between Stars and Anhel, it would seem. Stars just ahead on soft compound tyres. Oh, very, very old, though. Lap 10 laps old now. Ben, is he going to try and stretch these to the end? I can't imagine it. Or is he's he going to go for Stars at the end? But here he goes, just he's absolutely breezing go. Stars. It's an interesting. It's an interesting idea, idea here, because he should be able to. He should be able to have the freshest of those mediums to just storm away from stars in these three corners, and he pretty much has. He might even lose him from DRS here. He, my God, Unicorn, he has done it. And now it starts going to come under pressure from Angel on those mediums. So expect stars to pit in the next lap or so and go into those hard or maybe mediums. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, as one Alpha Tari gets overtaken, another overtakes Mikau on fresh hards. He's looking to try and secure his podium position. The Alpha Tari currently in fifth. Anhel and Stars are exchanged again. And Stars back up into P3. A nice defense from him on these very, very old softs. And, well, if he can keep holding Anhel up a little bit, it might make Mikau's job a little easier getting past the racing point. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Stars hop into the pit lane at all to get off of these 10 lap old sauce. Although Trin, up at the front right now, has stayed out. And so has Stars. Yeah, what are they doing? And well, Anhelm, then he runs to the back of Stars, has to go very deep to avoid contact. I'm, th I'm guessing they're going for the medium synth. They don't have the confidence to maybe make those mediums last. Or maybe they're, they're fishing for a safety car here. Oh my god, this is very interesting. They've going to lose a lot of time to the cars that were behind him or they were racing with originally due to that massive undercut. Like, for example, Mikael is already on the back of his teammate. And that was about a 10 second gap beforehand. And he's closed right up on stars. Well, I think Mick just tried it down into turn one. You can see Anhel now looking around the outside. He's already got P3 away from stars. And is stars going to let Mick past here? It's not going to be the case down into turn six. But here we go. Oh, Mikael out the inside. Again, I think he just wants to slipstream now. But Unhel's actually getting yeah. away from the pair of them. Well, interesting enough, turn turn seven, turn eight. That's a that, that can be an overtaking spot. It does open up a bit, so he, he could have been let through there. It's kind of man, he's dropped off the back of An Angel, but I don't think Angel's in the same race as Mikhail at the moment. He's more in the same race as Stars. Both yet to pit. Both on aging tires. It's Red Panda's looking for a move around the outside of Stars. Yeah, he joined that party oh, very late, but. Yeah, not successful well, for him. All this fighting's allowed Peter in on the in on the mix as well. And yeah, the brown guy looking for a switch back on Tumac and 
I think he might have found it. That's an excellent move for the Williams. They're side by side, though, and he's got the outside line coming down into turn 13. Around the outside, and oh, the Renault almost spinning, but... Yeah, he had a bit of a lock-up and just nearly, nearly, nearly spun, as you said, clipping the inside of Brown Guy's car. That normally doesn't end well on this... On this physics model. Well, here goes Mikau on the inside of turn one. And, well, there is a very, very solid move from the Alpha Tauri driver. If you like, his stars are also called pits. The same did Trent. And combined. So, the two guys yet to pit are Angel and Panda on the medium tyres. So, they can stretch those out about extra one, two or more laps. And switch over to hards if they like. PTR has caught the rear of Panda pretty quickly and he'll be looking to get past this medium runner, get past Arnel as well and go Ooh. for the podiums but yeah, a little bit of loss of traction and now Cello behind him dancing two, on the rear of him have, Yeah, these two have a bit of history behind them P Peter and Panda, Cello looks like he's going to get that move done, but Peter fighting back with that ERS Look at him go. It's going side by side now, down to 11. Who's going to bling first? Looks like it's Peter. Cello down the inside, nearly running into the back of Panda. Going deep. Peter going to have to give way to Cello. That's a decent move done now. Get going on those mediums. Try and make something of it. Might be able to make those last at the end of the race as well, but we'll see if that works. I doubt it will happen, but we'll see. Uh, two back doing a very similar thing. You're losing just a little bit of traction. I'm surprised at how well PTR was able to defend on those hards compared to the mediums. You would have thought that Cello would have had a, a much better drive out of turn line, but just wasn't the case. Another Red Bull is Jake, and he's trying to get past the Renault of Tumac, and as a result of being stuck behind him right now, he's lost a little bit of time to the brown guy ahead, and all of these guys on fairly fresh mediums now, with the exception of Unhell Panda. And then a few guys on the socks down at the bottom of this grid. No retirements, though, yet, Seb. We've still got everyone in this race, and you'll love to see it, especially around such a tricky track. It's been very, very clean so far, and we're halfway through this campaign. Well, I'll tell you, what, I'm rather impressed with that, the fact that there's been no retirements yet. It's been relatively clean. There's been a couple of instances where you could say there's a bit of rude racing, but... You know, they, it's a tight track. And you're trying to get track position on everyone else, so it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's bound to happen on a street circuit like this. We're just getting two trains forming right now. One, oh, one well, for P3. There's oh. a spin. It's Alpha Romeo Matt. He's done at the bottom on fresh hards and through turn 13. No damage on that car, so there'll be no risk of a VSC or a safety car. But it's a little bit unfortunate for him as. Panda, Angel, down into the hairpin. They've got the McLaren and oh, Cello, Cello on the inside. This is the second time this race we've seen a move like this from him. He's got one. I don't think he's going to get the other. If he, if he did that, Unicorn, that would have been amazing. That would have been some sort of racecraft, as Matt's called it, quits in the pit lane. But yeah, that, was, that, just, that, just, that just sat up for him nicely there. Panda got squeezed out by Angel. Angel went a bit deep into turn 11. As Panda's really losing that car. Through these, through the final sector. Expect to see him pit soon, unless he wants to stretch these out, go onto the softs later, which is what I'm thinking he will do at the moment. Yeah, very, very nice stuff from it. We've also got Ooh. PTR dancing on the back. There's a lot of wobbling going on through that final not, corner. Watch this. They're not going to give each other a lot of space here, a lot of respects, I don't think. Yeah. Or not. I was wrong. I was very wrong about that. Panda just gives him the corners. Panda looks to be Just struggling. Yeah. He's really struggling. This isn't really his He's fight. He, he really should call it call it into the pits as Angel's just going to get out of the way of these two. We need to fight. But Peter, looking good so far. Those hards. But however, he's on the harder compound tyre to Cello. But this may work out for him later in the race if Cello's tyres do go off. Peters are a little bit older though, they're, you know, already six laps compared yeah. to Cello's three, and that's going to cost him right now, but DRS, really going to give him a look up the inside, you can see him absolutely just breezing past the McLaren right now, and there's the position for the Red Bull, and this is the kind of thing he does need to be doing, he does need to be putting Cello under oh, pressure, oh, Cello deep. again, 
a brilliant switch back up the inside by the McLaren. He is absolutely nailing that hairpin. But is PTR going to have another look around the outside here at 13? Whoa. Cello just holds his line and says, no way, sir. You are not coming through here. It's been some just stellar Jeez. driving from Cello this evening, sir. Can we, can we call turn 11 the Cello corner? Because he is he's making it his own. Like, he owns that corner. Every time there's just a battle there, he he's able to get that little bit extra out of the car and position himself in a way that is advantageous to himself and make the most of what is given to him. It's pretty good. Clips the inside wall there. Gee, that was very close to sending it into the outside of 10 10 3 But he's, Cello's been absolutely brilliant through turn 11. Loving what I'm seeing from that. Yeah, I don't know what he's been doing to, to practice that, but he has absolutely nailed it. Obviously, the best overtaking spot, and if you've got it down like Cello has, it's just going to make you so, so powerful in the race, and we're just seeing that right now. He just does not seem to be having any issues throughout that corner. He's just been super exactly, clean, super opportunistic, and really good racing for him. Exactly, and considering how tight it is, it's it's such a tough corner to absolutely nail. you got that outside curb. You know, it just looms on you when you exit the corner of turn 11. And that can really catch some drivers out, you know. Some people can brake just a little bit too late. It's really hard to pick your braking point with how tight the corner is. And especially when you're going side by side. But, you know, it's it's the better drivers that make the most of tough situations. Make the most of the opportunities, which is what Cello is doing right now. But PDR is coming back at him. This looks to be like he'll have this one. Cello looking down the inside again. Not gonna to find it though. Why not? Well, it's a bit too tight through that through turn eleven that time to make anything of it. But other than that, he's been brilliant through there. The only problem that these two are having right now is that this is for P3. We'll only see one of them on the podium if everything goes to plan for Mick and Ben. Mick right now is absolutely tearing away from these guys because of this battling, and well, Ben is ten seconds up the road from Mikhail alone, yet alone these guys, that's 16 Red seconds Red Pan's going into the pits we'll see what he goes on to, I'm expecting him to go into the soft tyres a few people as well saying that Ben could be toying with the idea of softs to the end as yeah. well, pitting off of the mediums I'm... and well, Enzo looked up the inside of turn 1 and he might still look up the inside, not going to find it though Getting a bit out of shape It'd be ideal for Emzo to just dispatch Angel as quick as possible here. Might be able to get onto the back of Cello and Peter if they keep racing in, in the next couple of laps. But it doesn't look like he's getting a good enough exit out of these corners to really fight Angel, who, although on 16 lap old mediums, is doing a really good job to maintain composure and keep his racing point under control. Yeah, he is going to drop... A fair few positions though when he does come into the pit lane. It is a fairly long one here. Probably going to spend about 30 seconds as Cello and PTR exchange places once again. But it's way before the corner. A little oh. tap for the Red Bull into the rear of the McLaren. Sees him back through. Is he going to concede the, the place? I don't think really. he is. He's touching as well. Gee, that wasn't great from Peter. PTR. Really should give the position back. But I don't think Cello will be happy with that. But... He's still got another 12 lap or 11 and a half laps to go. Let's try and get this job done. Yeah, and I could think we're going to see these two go at it all the way till the end. I wouldn't be surprised to see Angel hop into the pit lane now. In that he's not, he's not, though. He dropped off a second, oh, one and a half seconds in the past two sectors on Emzo. He's still going. Two max in. And he didn't really need to, I don't think, but. Trin on the rear of Angel. He'll be looking to make what should be a fairly easy pass on the racing point. He's got a huge, huge tyre advantage and I think he's got to imagine the driver out of here through turns 4 and 5. Should give him the move down into turn 6 if he wants it. But even then, the move down into the hairpin would be beneficial but actually not got the drive I was expecting him to have. Angel right now, absolutely brilliantly managing his tyres, and well, soft to the end, it'll be a pretty easy stint for him. Simdogger, a five second penalty for spinning in the pit lane, not how he wants to round out this campaign, it might be a retirement in the pits though, that's something we usually see if someone is going to do that, as here he goes, Trin, up the inside, 
Easy as you like in Cello and PTR. Once again, PTR is very deep. I don't know whether Cello sort of gave him a little taste of his own medicine there or what, but she's not catching it. But there is now 1.4 seconds between the Red Bull and the McLaren. It's just... Nicely done for Cello. Fighting hard for it. I don't think he would have been too happy with what happened in the previous lap or sorry, not the previous lap, two laps to go. It's Jake and Angel. What's going on here? Oh, let's go. Oh, Angel's between around, Angel's two. That's why that's why Angel's going so slow through the last sector. That's why puncture. Jake was having a bit of Yeah, he's got a puncture. That's how old those tires are. That's how long he's been stretching them. Well it's red pandas on a charge now. Yeah, it was an optimistic stint from the racing point, and Jake's lost an empire. I don't know if it was as a result of that incident or not, but he won't be too happy that he's got involved in it either way. Now, Pan on these yeah, softs. Can... Depending on how quickly we see him catch, I think we'll determine if Ben's being engineered. I'm not, not quite sure on that front, but... Will he come in for the softs? We've heard it a little bit. Those mediums at the end won't be feeling too good at all. And we've just seen one pop after 17 laps. Ben is looking to take them a little bit further. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Ben, yeah. and not only Ben, but Emzo as well, maybe Cello, hop onto some softs. I think Trin on those five lap old mediums there might be the only one who's safe from that puncture territory. Yeah, stars as well, Shrimp as well. Well, I believe Shrimp was on those medium on mediums beforehand, so I'm sure he's gone back onto mediums. But yeah, you know, Emzo, Cello, Ben, they may need to pit again. Maybe not Cello, but I'm thinking Emzo and Ben definitely do. Jake, Jake also could be put in that conversation, so they'll be looking at either saving ties or they might just push and try and try and go for that two stop. Ben, the, Ben the Bears in a good position to do that though. Well, how long this track is, as I've said before, and you know, a lot of time to gain through these 23 corners. Yeah, we've just heard from the Mercedes pit wall. He will be in to the pit lane, presumably at the end of the next lap, and apparently that will put him about five seconds behind Mikau, and whether we'll see the Australian react. He doesn't have to, but he could. Shrimp comes into the pit lane. Again, going to be soft at this stage of the race, you've got to think. There's not really any other choice, and... Well, let's see what else everyone else does. Cello, again, all of these drivers pretty much... Might be forced at this point to get off of these mediums, because I don't know if they'll make it to the end, Seb. But Enzo as well, those 10-lap old mediums, they are going to be a real stretch to get to the end. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 10-lap old mediums, you expect them to go around 14 laps from the start. But some guys have made them last about, like... For example, um, Angel made them last nearly 17 laps, so, you know, it's, it's, it can it can be possible, it can be done, but it's it's going to be touch and go. They're going to be on lower fuel, so they'll, they'll help with their, their equation of making sure the tyres are alive by the end of the race, but we'll see what happens. Well, here is Ben, there are the softs, and the Mercedes gets that pit stop done. Mick flies into... P1, how long will it take Ben to catch up? And will he be able to get the overtake done? It looks like the Mercedes squad might have actually miscalculated this a little bit. It's not going to be five seconds, the gap. It's going to be more. Plus, Cello and PTR in between. Although they, they are actually behind him now. Uh, turn one, turn two. So Ben does just about get ahead of them. But yeah. it's 6.7 seconds, the gap. That's very doable. That should He should be able to get it in. One and a half seconds a lap, maybe by the end of the race, if those softs maintain their integrity. There's Stars and Jake are going out. Meanwhile, for P6, looks like there's a bit of tap there. Jake's lost a bit of his front end plate as well. That's before this battle. Yeah, Panda as well hops past the Red Bull and says, Yeah, flag, don't see anyone stationary on track, but Jake. Right now, not having the time of his life. And, well, the damage on that front wing of the Red Bull might be costing him here. He's got Emzo and Tumac not too far down the road on fresh slots. His teammate PTR right now, Cello, 
these guys still going at it down into turn 11. And, well, PTR. He gets the move done this time on the McLaren. Panda and Stars. Panda picks up P6. And there is a lot of battling still at this late stage of the race. And it's been a pretty eventful one. Only one retirement in the pit lane. That was Matt earlier after a spin. Just left him way down at the back of this grid. But Stars having a huge look up the ears on a turn 13. I don't think that was ever going to work for the Alpha Tari. But a very, very ambitious move for him nonetheless. The ambitious and Dean, what does this mean? It's just dropped him off further from Panda. And apparently Stars and might be having some sort of connection issue. Uh, looks to be fine from Jake's perspective. Uh, I dropped off now. But yeah, Stars and Pan aren't really in the same race, at least for the moment. Oh, brown guy on five lap hold mediums. He hops into the pit lane. Combined YouTube on eight lap hold soft. Sorry, soft for Brown guy as well. They don't think they're going to go to the end, so it looks like another set of tyres for the pair of them. I don't know if the Williams needs a new front wing as well. It looks like he does. He is going to get that wing change done and dusted. Ben already about three seconds caught to Mikko. He's absolutely flying right now on these fresh softs. Mm -hmm. I think I said one and a half seconds per lap. That might have been a bit off with that estimate, but still, he, he should he should have Mikko covered. Sure to get that move done. While having the well, still having some life left and performance left in those soft tyres. Yeah, he should be able to pick up fastest lap as well. If he, I'm pretty sure he already has it, and uh, said it earlier on in that race. But let's see if we can get fastest up. Fastest up actually right now is Mr. Anhel in 11th place, a 136.6. But well, let's see what Turn he can do. Can that. There it is. Yep, easy. 136 he's flat for the Mercedes. Yeah, he's taken a second out of Mikko in the last sector, so. Yeah, just watching Cello and PTR right now from my perspective, he's just slowly working away to him. He's about a second at this time last lap. He's, they're still fighting. Moving on for a past 10 ish laps over from memory. But it's been a good battle to watch. Closest battle so far on track at the moment. Yeah, it looks to, looks to get even better as the race goes on. Yeah, a quick look at the penalty situation. The top six all clear. Stars, those six seconds. Jake as well with three seconds of penalties. They're all the way down in 13th. Shrimp three seconds. Yukio six. And Slim Dog about five seconds for speeding in the pit lane. But that's it for the penalty situation. No one else has got any to speak of. Here goes Cello though. PTR, we haven't seen this one for a couple of laps, but we've seen it plenty of times over the course of this race. Up the inside for the McLaren, and there it is once more. Just giving J uh, PTR sorry, enough room on the outside, but really not the optimal line at all. PTR might have a look back to turn 13, but it's going to be not enough space. Not close enough either for the Red Bull, and well, I think he might have been struggling a little bit with dirty air there coming through into the opening corners of Sector 3. He gives just a little bit of time to that McLaren. Ben the Bear, meanwhile, has caught Mikau, and I'd be surprised if we didn't see this move done before Turn 6, unless he really wants to hold off for the DRS down into 11. He just needs to be patient here, to be honest with you. Just keep it clean. This is his. Very far today. Hopefully that doesn't... Hopefully saying that doesn't... Jinx him. Well, it looks like he'll have this racer in, in the bag. Well, he's Mikhail not close enough. Been, he's been, you know, he should have, he should have it next next DRS straight. Mikhail being quietly good today, just chipping away, taking 18 points, keeping that lead at the top of the championship, extending it with no Remco and no Captain of Gold to racing tonight. It's helping him out as Peter and Cello going on it through turn eight. Up front, and the bear takes the lead back from Mikhail. Yeah, very, very nicely done for Ben. And here goes PTR past Cello very early in the straight as well. Maybe Cello's tyres starting to lose a little bit of their edge. The 
advantage may now be in the favour of PTR. Who hops into Meanwhile, P8. Meanwhile for P8. Yeah, meanwhile for P8, Emzo has just made some light work of Jake for P8. Jake obviously without wing damage and 13 lap old mediums, while Emzo has got those fresh softs that are only two laps old. T Mac might be able to have a bit of a go at Jake later on in the race. He might be able to snag an extra point from that Red Bull. But we'll see what happens in 4P9. But meanwhile, Chell and Peter still going at it. Yeah, these guys. We said it was going to go to the end, and it already has been looking like that has been the case for the last few laps. They've been just constantly battling. I don't know when they were last had a DRS range of each other. And they're on slightly altering strategies as well. And Cello's tyres, they're going to be pretty old at the end of this race. Struggling for grip, struggling for pace. And well, that could see him lose out to PTR here. He's already around the 7 tenths mark. But he'll get DRS down into turn 6. Which should just keep him close enough. And I don't think Panda's going to catch on those stuff. I think they're just going to die out too early. And it'll be too much of a run. But Trin... In P5 right now, 2.6 seconds, slightly fresher mediums. If Cello mm -hmm. and he, PTR keep battling, it could be on for him. He's, yeah, he could be on for him. He's been quietly good as well, just like Mikio. Slowly chipping away. That if these guys keep battling, he could be he could become really, really d dangerous to these two in the last lap. Just just to note, these two both had less than 20% ERS coming into the final corner of lap 24, which was last lap. So now it's just going to be interesting to see who's, who's going to save more ERS. Is Chelo just going to try and just stick in DRS with Peter for now? And just gather it up and just save it for a last lap burst? Or is he just going to try and slowly chip away at him? He's, he's going to make a decision soon because you've got to come up with a plan and execute that plan. And on, <laughs> on aging mediums, it's, it's going to be tough to do, but... Yeah, it's just about which one of these. I mean, well, the 11th, turn 11 is going to be a very, very close battle on these last few laps. It's all about who gets the last lunge down on lap 28. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, T Mac and Jake going at it for P9 as T Mac has really caught up to Jake in the last lap. It's like you have this move as I think, I believe Jake's lost both sides of his wing. Yeah, oh, not means he's lost his right side, but Angel's also there. Looking like he's going to take that points place from Jake. Yeah, pretty unfortunate performance for Jake in that Red Bull. And, well... He was looking good early on, wasn't he? Yeah, he was strong. He had a he bit of an lively. unfortunate That's, start if turned out well serves. But qualifying went his way and he looked like he would be on for a strong points finish here. But, well, there it goes. Angel... Past that red bull, and it looks like all hopes of points now rest on the soldiers of PTR, who is still battling for P3 with Jello. But there hasn't been an exchange in a little while, and it looks like the red bull might just have this McLaren out of the podium finishers. It'll be a very interesting interview with either one of these guys, because I imagine it will be one of the two, unless Trin can find some miracle in these last couple of laps to get past either one. Meanwhile, Ben already extending his gap to about three seconds to Mikau. Yeah, they're just about to tick over to 27 now. They, they need to fight a lot if Trin wants, wants to get into, in on this action. They need a lot of fighting to happen right here. But right now, it looks like, it just it just kind of looks like to me that Cello's just biding his time, to be honest. I feel like he could get this move done. He's got an ERS advantage. He's just waiting for that last lap. So that, yeah. It looks like he saved over that last lap, might save it over this lap as well. Just get close, but threaten him. Maybe he could try and force him into a mistake. But that's looking unlikely. Peter's looking pretty clean so far, without any battling. Yeah, again. No move down into turn six, but Shrimp in the house. See, he has just made a mistake as they come through where it happened through turns eight and nine. He was spun around, hit the wall. And it looks like Jake is into the pit lane. Fresh shots maybe going to go for a last ditch attempt for the fastest lap and beat Ben. Take that point away from the Mercedes squad. And at least give PTR the, you know, the best advantage he has, obviously. 
Jake reserving meanwhile. today for Remco. Yeah, meanwhile, Emzo's just taken P7 from Stars, who's average race just got a bit more average. They start off well, had a rocket start, and then had a bit of contact with Mikio in turn two. I think with a bit of help from Peter in that little exchange. And he's just kind of fallen back from there, had some contact with, from memory, I believe it was Emzo at yeah, turn 11, and then had to give up two, a spot for that, and that also led to him losing another spot, and then also had a big moment which might have dulled the confidence a bit. But meanwhile, Cello's, Cello's really putting up a fight to Peter right now. I think I was yeah. right about that biting time thing. Yeah, last lap, and he is right on the gearbox of that Red Bull. Tyres will not be feeling good for either driver at this point, you can imagine. And, well, there's the DRS. Low fuel as well for the McLaren. PTR not seeing the same warning light, so maybe a little bit more in the engine Peter mode. Peter looks like he wants to give up this position. Yeah, Peter looks like he wants to give up this position right now. Oh, Cello just... Cello's going to take him, it. No. He's going to take it. That's interesting. I would have just let it... I would have just backed off. Is Maybe he going to let him pass to... the detection point, though? It's possible. Yeah, I don't think he will. He's got a pretty good exit out of it, but I don't think he'll be able to hold off. It's not seven tenths. Well, Trin's Look doing at the Trin, fight, yeah. Trin, yeah, he's, de he's definitely doing this party. Panda's about 1.8 seconds behind Trin as well, so he could even come into this, to this mix if there's a lot of troubles. Shrimps are tired on the exit of turn 11. And meanwhile, Peter's looking down the entire cello. Very aggressive. Going for the Sen. Will he get it done? Cello looking for the switchback. Can he get it done? Oh, he's brilliant. He's been absolutely brilliant through here. He's squeezing Peter, but he gets a bit of wheel spin. And now Trink would get into the action here in the turn 13. Yeah, well, there was a Haas on the inside. They just crashed out. Shrimp did. I think the one crash we've had retiring on track. But PTR is still battling the winners. Ben the Bear has one. Mick out in P2. But Trin on the rear of Cello. Yeah. Could he find Look it? Look out for a move. Look out for a move into turn 22 from Trin here. He could go oh, he's tapped the rear. He's oh, he's round. He's hit. It's Panda past the uh, Alfa Romeo, and there goes Emzo as and well. And he nearly collected Emzo as well. Yeah, he nearly collected. He just he just hit the back of Ch of um of Cello, and that just sent his rear end around. Oh, it's unfortunate because he, he looks good. He looked like he was on for an overtake there. He really did, but that's just gone and cost him a healthy six points there. Well, McLaren may not have picked up P4, but I don't think they were expecting P6 as well. A strong double points finish for them. Then behind them, we've got Stars, a double points finish for Alpha Tauri as well. Tumac in the Renault in ninth, and well, Angel, after that entire race, picked up P10. And then we have Goodbye June Tuber, and then everyone else yet to finish this race. The brown guy comes across the line in 12th. Jake picks up 13th. Yukio will take 14th, and then Gorziek, it's been an unfortunate evening for him. He's missing both end plates on that Mercedes. As... It... Tell you what, I'm pretty impressed with how these guys drove today. Considering there are only two DNFs, one in the final lap and one just a kind of give up. Uh, kudos to these drivers for, you know, not having that many big incidents we should say because there weren't many there was just a little lot of love taps we should say yeah but very very impressive race very nice stuff and well panda picks up driver of the day currently fourth in the standings so see where this lands they're only three points behind remco so imagine here we have with that but ben finally the bad luck spell has ended for him and he picks up p1 I think we'll get an interview with him in just a moment. Mikau as well, P2. And well, third place goes to PTR in the end, but you got to say it wasn't always looking that way. Him and Cello throughout that race, side by side, wheel to wheel. And, well, we'll have to see what comes of that. But there we are, the final standings. Ben, from first to first, a two-stop working out very nicely for... The Mercedes driver, Mikau, from third to second, gaining a pace, and he'll be happy to continue his lead at the top of the Drivers' Championship. PTR picks up third. He started second, though, so not the best air racing, but he had a lot of battling with this man right here. Cello, seventh to fourth. A very, very strong race, and it could have been a podium for him. Panda picks up P5, so he will take P3 in the standings. If not, actually, P2. He might get close to that. Emzo in sixth, started sixth, so... A very strong race from him, and well, that was all thanks to 
Trin here in 7th. He started 10th, but it really could have been a lot higher for him. But that mistake on the final lap in the last few corners cost him big time. Stars picks up P8, but started 5th. Tumac finishes 9th, and Anhel rounds out the point. Scoring finishes. Then we have combined YouTuber, the brown guy, Jake, Yukio, Gorziek, Simdogger, and then Shrimp. He does get qualified, but ended his race early on the last lap. And Matt retired in the pit lane. But we will be getting some... Driver interviews here in just a moment. We'll be talking to all of those top three. Fingers crossed. PTR not there at the moment, but if he does arrive, we'll try and get it. If not, Mick, Al, and Ben are ready and waiting. But Seb, what a race! What are your thoughts now that uh, that's? Well, I tell you what. Thank, thank God Vietnam's over because it's. Uh... I think I think for a lot of these drivers, it's just relief to get this race over. It's Vietnam. It's a tough track. It's probably the least liked track on the calendar. But I'm I, I will say I'm I said it before. I'm very impressed by these guys to keep it as as mostly clean as they did and just leave it to love taps. At the end of the day, no major instance to be looked at, most likely or, or reported. So at the end of the day, congratulations to Ben the Bear, Mikael and Peter for making the podium. Yeah, well, let's get that first interview underway. It's race winner, PTR. PTR, Peter, how how was that race? That was a pretty hard-fought battle from you. What are your thoughts after that one? Yeah, expected to get P2, battle of Mika, but I got held up to the pit stop. Then I got damage, so yeah, had to battle Cello for like eight laps of damage, so yeah, pretty tough. Yeah, well, we saw you and him going side by side. A lot of action into that hairpin turn 11. And, well, Cello was doing a very valiant effort. You know, how did you overcome that? He seemed to just have that corner down to a T. That was that was probably the toughest race I've ever had, to be honest. Like, Bloss 8 left the damage. Like, that was insane. He just went for the dive and I just defended and lost... Last lap, I let him pass me so I can get the DRS. I guess that worked. Yeah, well, we saw that, and you'd been just saving. He'd been saving up ERS, but you managed to put on a very, very valiant defense down into that corner and hold it off. Were you always going to go for the soft hards? Because the soft mediums, I think that's what probably cost Cello in the end to you. Your hards just holding on with the pace a little longer. Yeah, I was always going to go soft hards since I'm not really confident with tire wear, and... I want to go to Anacard on a make out since I know it's going to go hard, so yeah. Well, very much congratulations, and uh, you know, this looks good for your you know championship run already. 12 points on the board, and now you know, another good haul of points here with a P3. So, you know, good luck in the rest of the championship, and you know, we'll see you next time. All right, thank you. All right, so next up on the list, P2, Mikael will get Seb. Seb will. Go ahead. How you going, Mikael? It was a pretty quiet race for you, but looked like you had it clean. Looked like you had everything under control. How you going, man? Uh, I'm I'm doing well, with Seb. Thanks for asking. Uh, P two, uh, not quite the the uh, triple win in a row, but uh, Ben was just just too quick today. I uh, couldn't keep up with him, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty pretty clean race. Uh, clean race from our side. Uh, just. Bit bit uh scary into the first couple of corners, uh, but after that it was uh, pretty pretty relaxed, pretty controlled. Yeah, just give us a quick rundown of the first couple of corners because I saw um you Peter and um Stars, your teammate, just got a bit squabbled through turn two after Stars had a magnificent start to say the least. Just walk us through what happened real quick. Yeah, so uh I felt like I got like a pretty decent start, and uh, I was sitting in, in third behind. Uh, behind a Ben, um, and PTR just didn't really get off the line like very well, like compared to both Stars and I. And you know, Stars had an incredible start. I didn't expect him to to be on my right hand side, um, but yeah, it was just three wide going to the first couple of corners, and I couldn't really go anywhere because uh, going three wide into turn one is is very hard. And you know, none of us wanted to back out, so got sandwiched a bit there. Had a bit of a tap, I think, from. From PTR that almost sent me spinning, but luckily I was able to to catch the car and, and keep it going. And Stars didn't get wing damage as well from that, which was which was crucial for for our race as a team. Well, last question from myself. That's 18 points on the board. You now 
you, you've extended your lead in the championship. Captain Gold isn't here. Uh, Remco didn't race. Uh, how are you feeling with the championship? I know Ben the Bears just had a had a good kickstart now to his campaign after having those first two races. Just give us a rundown of how you're feeling three races in. Uh, I'm I'm very confident with the consistency that that we've shown. Um, no, that's that's all it's that's all it's about. You know, for a championship run, it's just about getting those consistent results. And you know, the performances have been there. The pace has been you know as expected, which is good to see. Uh, so you know, no bottles happening in any of the qualifying or the race. Uh, so yeah, just got to keep keep working with the team, keep pushing. And trying to find those few extra attempts, and uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll be able to uh, keep the uh, podium streak going. All right. Well, congratulations on the podium. Congratulations on P two, and happy nights. Yeah. Cheers, Seb. Thanks. All right, then for the last driver we've got, it's Mr. Ben the Bear. Finally, you've managed to get rid of that. String of bad luck. Ben, how are you feeling after that one? I feel quite great, actually. <laughs> Coming back after two DM DNFs was was a struggle, you know. Mentally was was heartbroken after those two races, but I think it was great. Well, it was a super, super strong race, but everything seemed to go your way from the very, very start. You were over half a second quicker than everyone else in qualifying, just, you know... That, was that was that the perfect lap? I know a lot of the times you're not happy with your qualifying laps, even though they are so quick, but that lap just seemed... I, I would say the second and third sector was very good, but the first was a bit scruffy. I think I could have taken a bit more risk, but, you know, I had to just pin in the lap because I know Mick was behind me and he was, you know, probably on a good lap. Well, so I... That race, you were pretty much on your own the entire time, but you did come in for that second stop. Not a lot of other drivers went for that two-stop in sort of like a planned fashion, it looked like a lot of it was a bit reactionary, but were you it always planning really, to do the two stop? It wasn't really a plan. It was like I think I was going to go to the end with mediums because I knew I probably could extend the stint with the mediums if I slowed down a bit at the end because I had the gap between Mick and me. But I think going for the softs and getting that extra point made me feel a bit happier. So uh, that's great for me, I think. Well, speaking of points, you've got you know. 26 now after today i do believe you get the fastest lap so you finally flung yourself into this driver's championship do you think you can catch mick out you know with that sort of level of performance obviously it's possible but you know is your confidence back to where it needs to be after those first few races i mean i think it's getting there but i think you know you can never underestimate mick he's he's he can be a quick driver at any other track he's consistent you can see that by the like points cut so far. Yeah, absolutely. Seb, any questions for Ben the Bear before we round things out? Uh, not not really. Um, just congratulations on P one and congratulations on finally getting your your championship campaign underway. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, man. Congratulations, man. All right. And that pretty much wraps everything up for this evening. And, well, for those of you in the APAC sort of time zone, it's this evening. But for everyone else in the EU, we've got another race this evening for us at 8 p.m. GMT or 3 p.m. EST. It's F2 action, where I think it's me and Alex Biddo commentating the one-shot qualifying in a sprint race and a feature race. So two races this evening for everyone else. But... Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. Seb, any closing remarks after that race? Um, thank God we don't have to race at this track anymore. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Yeah, Vietnam done and dusted for the F1 calendar. But, again, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Seb, obviously, for commentating alongside me. And, well, F2 tonight. And, obviously, all the tiers will kick off action in China, Tier 3. On Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. again, GMT and 3 p.m. EST. But that's all from us, and we will catch you in the next race.